Alright everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to kind of deviate away from what I've been talking about recently. I learned how to create, and I learned some, I learned the basics, and I plan to take this further, um, but I learned how to create a, an API in Python over the weekend because I have been also learning with ASP.NET Core, and I can also start a little series on that if you guys are interested. But it got me to thinking, I wonder if I can create one in Python, and I answered my own question this weekend, and I thought, why not make a little series on that? Uh, maybe the first video we can get, and the second video we can post, and then do some authentication and all that good stuff in the next video. So I thought I'd make a little series out of that. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit subscribe, and let's just, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Um, so I have a few things going on here. I have PyCharm, which if you don't have PyCharm, it's a nice little IDE. It's free for Python. And I have Postman, which you can see I was practicing here before uh, making a video. Let me just clear all these. And let me just clear this whole thing here. And get that. Uh, how do we get this to go away? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, and Postman is just a way for you to make API requests with this nice little. Uh, desktop application. So it's pretty neat. And it saves a lot of time. So let's go ahead and talk about one of the prereqs for uh, making API with Flask, and that is to actually have Flask installed. So in PyCharm, you can go to settings, uh, your project. I call this YouTube API, and you can call it, of course, whatever you want. And then if you're in the command line, you can do something like pip install Flask. Um, but we're just going to go the GUI route. And Flask is right here, so I will highlight that and hit install, and it'll put that in this project for us. <clears throat> and I think it adds prereqs too, yeah, because it's not just Flask, we get a bunch of other stuff, so I'm assuming those are prereqs that are needed for Flask to run. Okay. So it's okay, and that's pretty much all we need. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about one more thing, actually, before I get started. And that is a bit on um, query strings. So you might have seen this before in a URL where you have a path in your domain, so like this, and then all of a sudden you see this question mark and you get something equals something. Uh, and something equals something. I guess this is a better example because we don't see these square brackets, so let's make that go away. Um, so we see authors is the last end of the domain, and then we get these variables. That's what I want you to think of them as. Name is equal to this, and another variable, for some reason it's the same, is named this. Okay? Um, so that's pretty much just passing variables or arguments into the API, and I just wanted you to be aware of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, import Flask, and we really just need to create an instance of a Flask application. So to do that, um, I'm just going to name this variable fl uh, app, not Flask. App is equal to Flask dot Flask with a capital F, and then we're going to pass in the name variable. And right now, if we go ahead and look, what is name? Yeah, go ahead and allow access for Python to run. If we just ask what is the variable name, right now it's equal to main. Okay. Okay, so we have our uh, app, and if we wanted to, we could do app.config, and then our debug, we can set equal to true, because right now we capital D, because right now we are kind of debugging it, right? So that's all we really need to do to set up our Flask application, and now we can go ahead and start writing, um, you know, different paths and different routes and what to do when you insert that route, uh, you know, with our API. We're going to go ahead and define it. So to define the route and then the, the action, um, you do at, so the at sign, and then whatever we named our variable. So we named it app dot route, okay? And then in this parentheses, it's going to take in two arguments, 
And the first one is going to be the path. So you have to start with the slash, and then for our sake, um, we're just going to name this API. And then the second one is the methods. And for us, we are going to do the get method. So the get method is just saying we're going to receive information when we make this API call. Let me let me make this a little larger. It might be hard to see. Okay. And then right below the route that we created, we need to define what's going to happen. So we're going to write a function, and I'm going to call this get games. And before I go ahead and write what the function does, let me show you, um, let me actually not show you, but let me make some data that, you know, we can um, display once this API is called. So from flask import JSONify, JSONify, and request. So I'm actually going to import these two and you will see them used here in the future but I just thought I'd do that now before I forget and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a dictionary so I'm gonna call this game and a dictionary is basically a data structure in Python that has a key and a value and it can have either one single key and value or it can have multiple uh, keys and values so in our case I'm gonna make something video game related so one of the keys is gonna be console Okay, and this is the syntax, by the way. So it's key colon value, and it's going to be PS4, not PS dollar sign, then comma, and we'll create another key and value for this dictionary. So the console is PS4, and let's go ahead and make the name of the game uh, like Call of Duty or something like that. You can follow along and enter your favorite video game. Uh, I just thought of a probably the most popular, one of the most popular. I guess the most popular now is probably Fortnite. Anyway, so we have this dictionary and it kind of represents a JSON object. Um, and if you don't know what JSON object is, it basically looks <laughs> like this. And the reason we need this JSONify is because it's a function that you can pass in this and it'll create a JSON object for us. So let's go ahead and say, okay, whenever they call this this API um, we are going to return this game dictionary as a JSON object so we run this JSONify and we pass the game uh, dictionary that we made All right so we save that and let's go ahead and after we do app dot run at the very end which starts up our flask application let's go ahead and hit this uh, run button here at the top or you can you know run it in the command line and you can see at the bottom here if I zoom in gives us the local host and then also the port so this is the URL to our currently running web application so if I go to Postman here and I go ahead and paste this URL um, that's just a base right we need to still go to API in order to um, call that so now we have API, we have get chosen in the dropdown, and that's all we need. We don't have any parameters or anything. Um, I'll show you here in a second what those look like. Let's go ahead and run that, and hopefully it works. Cool, and you can see if I, I don't know if it'll let me zoom in there. No, it will not. Um, but we get the status 200, which is successful. So that means it worked, and we return a JSON object with that dictionary that I made. It took five milliseconds, it's kind of cool. <laughs> of course, it's quick when it's running locally, right? So, got my water here, by the way. Talking makes you makes you thirsty. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, if we had multiple, let's, let's copy this. Actually, no, let's turn this into a list of dictionary items. Okay, so let's do comma, and then we'll just copy and paste this and put it below. So instead of PS4, let's make this Xbox, and it'd be like Xbox One, I guess is the competitor, but let's just name it Xbox, and then Overwatch, one of my favorite games nowadays. Okay, so I hit save, and you can see detected change restarting. Um, so it actually restarts our web, web server for us. Our, our local one, 
uh, well it restarts the web application and um, now it will show hopefully both when we hit that send request and it does not so what is the issue what did I do wrong console Xbox name overwatch name game is not defined oh it's because I renamed the games okay so let's save again we'll let it run and then we'll go back to postman and send that request again and now we get both so I, I forgot I changed the name to games to signify those plural and I didn't do it here easy mistake <laughs> and yeah we get the 200 um, and now we get both so let's do another one let's do another Xbox game to show you how we can use that query string to kind of narrow down what we're getting back Okay. All right, so we're going to keep this the same. Um, so what I want to do is I want to check and see. Well, I'm I'm going to assume that the user. This is not safe, uh, but this is just for showing purposes. I'm going to assume the user is going to pass a query string, naming a console. Okay, and so what would that look like? It would look something like this. Um, it would be slash API and then question mark. Oh, okay. Supposedly question mark. Oh, I did control question mark. Question mark console is equal to Xbox. All right. So it's going to say, okay, this console variable, we're going to pass this argument console is equal to Xbox. So let's go ahead and, and signify that. Let's say we want all of the games where the console is Xbox. So it would return these two, it would return Overwatch, and let's name this something else, uh, like Red Dead Redemption 2. I wanted to make sure I spelled that right. So we restarted that. I, it's just a habit I do to save every time I make a change. Um, okay, so now we need to make a variable to hold that, so I'm gonna name the, the variable console. This is where that request came in that we imported. We report JSONify and request, right? So request.args. Just going to say, okay, the arg arguments that was passed through with the query string. Um, we want the console one. So what was the value for the console argument? And if we remember, it was equal to Xbox. So now we need to go through each item in this dictionary and say, okay, if your console is Xbox, we want to return you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make this variable results, which is an empty list for now. And then I'm just going to loop through each dictionary in the list. So for x in uh, games. And we can make it something nicer, I guess, than x. It would be game and games. Um, if game console, so it's saying if that one's console, right in the dictionary is equal to x well no we don't want that we want console not xbox or ps4 we want what they passed in right so if it's equal to that results dot append game we're going to append that whole dictionary so we're going to append the console and the name of the game this whole thing Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So we got the console from the query string in the uh, API call. Uh, we got this empty list to hold them as we loop through and hopefully uh, add some to this list. And now all we need to do is return the results list of um, dictionaries, dictionary items, or I don't, I don't know what they call ind individual Dictionaries, maybe it is just dictionaries. I don't know the terminology. Okay, I think it reran. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's run what we made. And now you can see console equals Xbox, we get the two Xbox games. So let's see what happens if we put PS4 instead. P S4, and it is case sensitive, I believe. We can check that here in a second. I haven't actually uh, experimented with that. So what happens if we do PS4 in lowercase? Yeah, 
it is case sensitive. So it adds it to the variable and then it checks if they are exactly the same. So you could do upper and stuff just to ensure. Um, but yeah, and when we do PS4, it, it brings back the one PS4 game that we have in our dictionary. So yeah, that was a basic get. If you want to do multiple uh, API calls, you can do app route, um, not that route. You can have maybe a different path, and then you can say, okay, for this path, we're going to return all the games, and then for this path, we are going to check and see if there is a query string, grab that like we did up here, and uh, return the results with just that, that query string. So you could have one for each. Um, and now it basically just, if you wanted to copy this and do what we did initially, or, or vice versa. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of creating a Git uh, API in Python with Flask. Um, Hopefully you found this pretty cool. I found it really cool and how simple it was to set up off the bat and learn. Uh, of course, the syntax is a little hard, like right here. It's not something to remember off your first time, but it is quite simple. And um, yeah, I think the next video we're going to do post, and then maybe after that we'll hook it up to some kind of database and go back and forth. Um, but this is just the start, and we can just go from here. But anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this and learned something. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.